Greetings everyone, in this video we will create baked light and additional dynamic light sources with ray tracing shadow. We will bake using the built-in GPU baker. This is a scene from one of our students, so now I will remove all the lights and we are going to set them up again. Before setting up the lights, we need to check if all the necessary plugins and settings are in place. For that, I check under the build tab. If GPU load mass is not here, I go to settings plugins, type in GPU here. I check the box and wait for the program to restart. Next, go to settings, project settings, type in ray tracing shadow and make sure the box is checked here. Here, I type in virtual texture and ensure that both of these boxes are checked. Let's start setting up the lights. I will illuminate using an HDRI map and additional rectangle light sources. To set up an HDRI map, I choose to add light skylight. In the skylight settings, I select cube map and drag the HDRI map into the slot. I have a standard white HDRI map that will provide even white light without any tint. Generally, Skyloid is a large sphere split in half into an upper and lower domes. When we add HDRI, it goes on the upper dome, while the lower one remains black. We can change the color of the lower part of the dome. For this, we go to Advanced and change the color to white. With this, our scene becomes brighter and the ceiling is illuminated. Next, we add a post process. Add visual effects, post process volume. Let's input the following settings. Check infinite. Next, disable bloom. Set it to zero and adjust the exposure. We will select the manual exposure method. Here, we can check the box and input a value. To avoid distractions with materials right now, I will switch the mode. I will set lit to light only. Now we have the basic light and we can bake it. But first, we need to make a few adjustments. By default, when adding skylight, Unreal disables the Lumen Lightning method. It needs to be removed. For this, in the post process, we type global. We select the method and set it to none. Next, we choose our skylight. We switch into static mode so that the light can be baked and we choose ray tracing shadow. Here we set it to visible. Now we can observe the lights on the scene. They remain from the previous bake. When I rebake the scene now, they will disappear and later we will set them up again. Let's bake the light. Go to build in GPU light mass and click build lightning. Here we uncheck the box. After baking, we will adjust the exposure. Let's go to post process type exposure and produce it. We will leave it a bit darker than it may seem at the first glance. As I mentioned earlier, the main fill light in this video will also be done using additional rectangle light sources. This will give more control over the lighting settings. You will be able to accentuate the necessary areas and achieve beautiful shadows. We go to Add tab, Light, Rectangle Light. Place the rectangle outside the window. What settings are available for rectangle light? its size, height and width. Light fall of angle, I will move to the side to see better. Well, yes. We can see the options. Light temperature, cooler, warmer, light source intensity. And light range, less and more. Configure the light source more precisely. I will add another rectangle light to this area. I will copy, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, move it and configure it. Thus, using the rectangle light, we achieved a beautiful play of light and shadow and got a deeper volume. Next, I want to highlight the corridor. Using spotlight to create the effect of focused lightning, I got to add light, spotlight. What settings are available for spotlight? Inner corner angle, outer corner angle. 
The greater the difference between them, the softer the shadows. The next setting we need is light temperature. I will make it warmer next. I will adjust the intensity. I will set it to around 1 and adjust the light emission range. I copy this light source, Ctrl C plus Ctrl V. And again, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Now let's place the sun light, add light, direct light. To conveniently change the direction of the sun, hold down the Ctrl L keys. And rotate. I will go to settings, source angle control, source angle controls the softness of the shadows. The larger the value, the softer the shadows. I will adjust the temperature and reduce the intensity. I will hide the controllers using the hotkey G. And look at the result. The main part of the lighting is configured. Let's move on to material rendering and further adjust the light. Change light and coloring to lit. The first thing I want to do is add background. I have prepared a blueprint. I just drag it into the scene. What does it represent? It's a sphere with a spherical image broken into special parts. This is what they look like. I will set up the background outside the window. I will adjust brightness, saturation, contrast and light. I also think the shadows are currently too dark. This can be easily fixed. Go to post process, adjust gamma, and increase the value here. We can leave it like this. Now I want to remove the visibility of our additional rectangles. For this, I go to rectangle and enter specular and set it to zero. Before we saw how the light source was displayed here. Now, this is not happening. We do the same on the second one, specular, and set it to zero. The rectangle here is shining too brightly into the kitchen. I will adjust this. Remember. The light outside is always brighter than inside. Therefore, I want to highlight the veranda area. I will do this using the sunlight. I will angle it so it doesn't enter into the interior and doesn't conflict with our main light. Adding sunlight, light, direct light, Ctrl L and change its direction. I will slightly reduce its saturation and change the temperature. I will make the shadows softer. This looks better. The veranda has become brighter. Now let's illuminate the workspace. For this we will add another rectangle light. Light, rectangle light. We will rotate it. Change the sizes. Edit the angle, reduce the intensity. The intensity here should be very low because it's currently daytime and the backlight is not very visible. And change the temperature. I would further reduce the intensity. If you need a glowing part of the backlight, we will add a box. 
and assign the self-illuminating material to it. For this, we go to Add Menu, Shapes, Cube, change the box size using the scale to avoid any collisions. The box size should be slightly larger than required. In other words, let it intrude into the geometry. This is not a problem. On the contrary, it's beneficial in this case. Next, assign the self-illuminating material. It looks like this. A standard material. Color is connected. Emissive slot. And here this value controls the glow intensity. I'll make some adjustments to rectangle light. I can notice that there is noise from the rectangle light. To eliminate it, I go to rectangle light, show ray tracing, and here in a simpler picture, I increase the value. The noise disappears. Next, we may notice that our light sources have appeared with such crosses. This occurs because they are in station mode. We need to set them to movable or static. If we set static, then this light source will be baked. If movable, it will not be baked. We will make it so that they do not bake. So we can adjust them at any moment. I will switch all the light sources to movable. The crosses disappear. I will check to ensure that the other rectangle lights are also set to movable. Our skylight is in static. And spotlight is also in movable. We just need to set up the light from the floor lamp. We just need to apply a self-illuminating material to the inner part of the bulb. We select this part and apply the self-illuminating material. Be sure to check the box here. Use emissive for static light. Now it's necessary to bake the scene. The baking is complete. Let's look at the result. This concludes the lighting setup. I have done several renders. Let's take a look at them. Well guys, that is it for today. Please like and subscribe our channel. Uh, write down any comments, any questions. Our team will be really glad to answer them. We'll see you next time.